think in particular I would think about what's the role of a theological educator in society. Um, so certainly our role is to shape a generation of ministers, of church leaders, of Christian leaders, of people doing nonprofit work, all sorts of different kinds of ministry um, that help bring the good news to people's lives, the good news that frees people, that doesn't bind them. I mean, there's that task. But I wonder also, I had this sense that part of my role too is to be a public voice uh, that helps people connect what's happening in the world with what they're the, the convictions of their faith lead them to believe. So in this last year, I thought about this, how the, the last academic year was framed by Ferguson on one side and the uh, unrest in Baltimore on the other. So if, if, if the theology that I'm teaching my students can't speak in those places, I'm not sure it's theology. If the, the way of reading scripture that I'm teaching can't read scripture in those two places, I'm not sure God is, has anything to do with it. So part of that public voice is helping Christians uh, wherever they are, or even people of other faiths or people of no faith, think about how their values and commitments line up with the problems and the conflicts that we face today. And see those problems and conflicts not just as, um, not think about just easy solutions or easy resolutions or easy explanations for where they came from, but to think about the complexities of, of ideological and theological and political and historical realities that lead us to these places. Um, there's, a, there's a way to read, whether we're reading scripture or we're reading context or we're reading the newspaper. There's a certain aspect of reading that's still important that I, I hope to share more broadly as well. Uh, you know, I, I, what I hope, right, is that the, the joy of my vocational life is one of the ways that energizes the rest of my life as well. That that's one really, it's not the only part of my life, it's one key component of it. That there's a synchronicity between my vocation home life, my friends, and my family. Uh, so that's what I hope for, is that um, the joy of teaching is something that infects uh, the rest of the parts of my life, and the joys of my family are ones that I can bring into the classroom as well. Our communities look at your education in different ways. Some of them see it as a, as a deficit. Some of them see it as an advantage that you've gained. Um, I think what was hard about doing doctoral work sometimes is that there was a separation from the communities that nurtured you and the guild into which you were being now acculturated. There are ways in which those two align and ways in which those two were in tension. And I think for a lot of us, it was for me that I often dwelled upon those tensions and thought I had to make a choice between the community that nurtured me and the guild that was trying to shape me. I think looking back now, what I'm hoping more and more is that I can see that tension not as something I need to resolve, but where I can exactly dwell. Uh, that those communities are pulling me in one direction, the academy might be pulling me in a different direction, but I live in that tension. Um, that, um, that call to speak to both those communities is still alive and well. And again, it's not, you know, it can be painful, it can be hard, it can be stressful, but that's exactly where I feel called to be. My faith, I feel like, is constantly being impacted by the people I meet. So whether it's in a book, or the student in the class, or a new colleague. Um, there are ways in which my faith is always kind of expanding and growing and, and asking new questions because I encounter new people. Um, I feel that's one of the ways in which uh, the inspiration of the Spirit shows up in the presence of new people and new situations, and you wonder, what, what is going on here? So um, I'm in a different place than when I was when I was 16 or when I was at seminary or my doctoral program. Uh, but it's not a matter of being having more faith or less faith, really. It's about just understanding where that faith is today. That changes day to day. That it's, uh, you know, if we go back to the question, is, is the practices or is a way of being, I may stop doing those practices one day. Um, but I, 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 I hope, and I think it would be true, that my way of being would be so shaped by my years in the classroom that you never quite stop doing that. I, th I can think of a couple things that really are the most rewarding parts of this work. One um, is that sense of accomplishment of the everyday stuff. Just, you know, you had a great day in class, you wrote something that you're really proud of. Um, that really carries you. But recently, I've, uh, I had a, a, a former student email me with, uh, with this long email about the way that uh, things that we talked about it was interesting. He thought I wouldn't remember this particular conversation, but it was one of these distinct conversations that I think about a lot when I think about my teaching. 
and he was talking about how this, what he thought, what he thought I would think would be this little conversation was so shaping for him. Um, so it was really great to, to have a student kind of recognize that about themselves, to come back to it, um, to have that gratitude. It, it reminds me of the teachers I've had who were so influential, uh, whose words I still carry with me, whose encouragement still push me through. Um, and to kind of have that experience, to know that you're on the other side of that equation, it's just really satisfying part of this work. Um, and for me, for my faith, um, knowing that I'm doing what God has called me to do is, is a gift, even when I'm sitting in long faculty meetings. Uh, we live in a time of deep stress in theological schools. and cha- Things are changing constantly, and there are financial uh, and missional challenges all around. It can be a stressful life. It doesn't exactly look like I would have thought it would look like when I was in grad school. But it's deeply satisfying work. It's, it's work that's really fulfilling. It's work that gives me space to think, to write, to teach, to help lead new initiatives. To, it, it, it's it, never doing the same thing every day. Um, and that, I think, is just the best gift.